let's go into this uh, blueprint reading. Uh, understanding construction drawings. I may go really fast over these slides because some of you already have experience. So I just want to cover the very basics that I need everybody to know and understand. So we have different documents. Uh, there's a history about what the blueprint name comes from. Uh, so we have different documents that create the procurement package. Some of those are what we call the contract uh, drawings. So those drawings are representations of what we need to build, what's going to be the final product in the mind of the owner and the architect. So they can't just build the thing and show you, hey, this is what I want. They have to create representations of that future um, building using paper and lines. So they're giving us drawings that represent that idea, that concept. So we will see that we have different type of lines. We'll have dimensions on those drawings. We'll have symbols, different patterns. The architect writes some notes to let you know what they, they really want in some of those uh, areas or to clarify items that may not be completely clear. Legends to let you know what these patterns and lines mean. There are references. We have to look uh, very careful. Each drawing will have different scale. It will have a title that explains what the drawing is. Revisions, some sort of uh, identification in those drawings. There are different type of paper sizes, so depending on the paper size, you may have different scales. This is interesting. Um, AAA has a best practice at least for the different type of drawings that you may have and a code to those. So that way, if you look at any packet of drawings and you see they start with the letter A, those are architectural drawings. If they start with the letter C, those are several drawings. If we have a E, that will be electrical. Uh, P is generally for plumbing, F for fire protection. Here we have, a, I think this is a Q for equipment, uh, and so on. So each one of those drawings will have a letter that indicates what type of drawing that will be, okay? That's the beginning of your, your code. Then you will have another number that uh, represents either a, a schematic or a, a elevation or something. It will have to do a special designation. And then you have two last numbers are consecutive numbers for that uh, group. So there are eight steps in uh, reading blueprints. You verify that the set of drawings that you have is complete. You have all the drawings that you need. Then uh, look at the plan layout. Make yourself a, a visual image of what the building is going to be at the end. What do you have over there? How big this is? Look at the architectural drawings. Try to understand what the project is. What areas do they have? You know, what is the use of that building? Look at the foundation. See what are the, the notes they have, where, what those foundations are located, what type of foundations they are. Look at the structure. Look at the mechanical and electrical drawings. Look at the notes. Read the specifications and compare that to the drawings. Get a good idea, good grasp of what it is that you're doing. If you remember what I mentioned before, you'd want to look at the site. What do you have there right now? What needs to be demolished? Where are your foundations? What are your utilities? How are you coming into the building? Look at the underground aspect of it. Then look at how it, the structure is, how this, that building is constructed, what's going to hold the weight of that building. Look at the roof, the structure of the roof. How is that protecting the, the equipment and people inside? Then look at the closure of the building. Then look at the interiors. Then look at the, the windows and doors, electrical and mechanical. So that's sort of the process that you will follow to understand the, the drawings. We may have different type of drawings, preliminary drawings, presentations, working drawings, shop and assembly drawings, specialized ones. 
we have uh, electrical, mechanical, uh, basically uh, working drawings for the project. We don't have any shop or assembly drawings. Those are the ones that will be created for specific elements that will be then set, set for uh, approval. There are different type of lines in the drawings. Normally, the solid lines are visible lines of objects that represent the edges. Then you may have dashed lines that are, could be objects that are hidden from the view, either above or below. <clears throat> so those are uh, not the main objects. They are normally dashed. There are section lines. Those are lines that cross over sections in the drawings. Center lines that, that uh, represent center lines of items. Dimensions, uh, breaking lines, contour lines, property lines. There is a, a whole bunch of different type of lines that can be used in drawings. So I have uh, included some examples over there. Here is a, an example of a solid line. So this solid line represents the outline of some building, some object. We may have some dashed lines that may represent something else. In this case, that solid line represents new construction, and these dashed lines represent demolition. So you have to read the legends, and you have to read what um, the architect means when they put those lines over there. Here we have a larger type of a dashed line that represents another phase. So you, you, you need to read what the uh, drawing means. Here you have different type of uh, lines that could be chosen when you're drawing something. So you know there is a, a ton of uh, different options. Section lines. These are dashed lines that, that cut the whole building uh, in sections. So they they guide you to another drawing where you can see the detail for that section. So for example, here is calling for drawing 14A11, and then this is that section that is referenced in the plan line. So you need to understand that when you see these type of uh, lines, they reference to a cross section, and you should be able to find that cross section in the drawings. Here is an example of a dimensional line. So you have a, a dimension associated with the distance between those two. Here is a, an example of a center line. Um, here is another example of a center line. Normally, the center line will have a CL in that line. So when you see it, then you, you know that's a center line for something. Dimensions, we saw some dimensions already in the previous uh, lab work. Here's an example of the break lines. This is when you have a large object that the architect wants to show both the bottom and the top. And they said, well, the things in between, they look the same. I'm not concerned about that. So they do a break line here. And then they show you those two portions that they want to show. Contour lines uh, usually follow the contour of the, uh, the, the, the terrain. So here it's very difficult to see because it's almost the same, but it, there is a slight difference between the contour and the, uh, the building. It just uh, follows the, the lines. Property lines, it shows you, you know, where is the property borderline ends. Then uh, other aspects we have in the drawings are uh, dimensions and scales. Obviously, we can't fit the real thing into the paper, so we need to scale it down, and we need to make use of dimensions to show what type of uh, measurement you have in those items. So you take a big object, and to fit it into a paper, you scale it down, and there are tons of different type of scales that you can, you can have. So you have to be really careful when you do take off to make sure that you're using the proper scale. Because if not, you are going to be completely wrong about the size of that object. And believe me, it happens. More often than when you want to. I used to work for Pepsi. And uh, we were looking at this new uh, bottling plant we were putting in together and so on. And we were almost ready to, to start working. 
when one of the guys that was in the, in the room, he was looking at the drawings and he said, you know what? Something is wrong. What do you mean something is wrong? Well, I've worked with this particular machine before. It was a machine shown in the drawing. And that thing is huge. I don't think it's going to fit there. But, but look at the drawing. It, it does fit. I mean, see? Mm -hmm. It's there. So, let me tell you, something is wrong with it. So we started looking, and, and true. The machine was uh, drawn in inches, and the drawing was drawn in metric, in meters. So when they put it in, they didn't scale it. The machine was 2.5 times larger than what is shown in the drawing. So the thing was huge. <laughs> Guess what? Back to the drawing board. We had to, re you know, we, we had to break walls. We had to do a whole bunch of changes because the scale was wrong. Didn't happen to me. Only it happened to other people I know. So, you know, that's why I'm not working Pepsi anymore. No. <laughs> But you have to be really careful with this kind of stuff. Uh, here's an example of a, a drawing that it's, uh, you know, it has a one-eighth to a foot uh, uh, scale. So that means that every time that you measure one-eighth of an inch here, that is one foot in the, in the, in the building. If you measure one inch in that drawing, then that will be eight feet in reality, right? I'm not going to go through the exercise. So, you know, there are different factors that determine the size of the, the scale that you're going to use, basically how big the element is and the size of the paper. You have a different type of uh, architect, you have architectural type of scales than civil uh, metric types, so there are different type of uh, units. Sometimes you may have situations where you have the two type of units here, centimeters and inches, on the same drawing. So that, that's possible. I'm not going to go over this. We may have uh, isometric drawings where we have a representation of a, a, a plumbing system like this one. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it looks very confusing until you start understanding what really is. If you see horizontal lines, they are uh, on the horizontal plane. If you see vertical lines, it means they're changing elevation. So then you can start thinking, okay, so this is on the floor, this may be on the floor, and then whoops, we're going up to the roof for venting. Okay, so now you, you, you start getting a, an idea of what that system looks like. It's not drawn to scale, it's just uh, to represent where are the different items, and to look at changes in elevation that are very difficult, if not impossible, to see from the plan layout. Construction drawings, you know, we, we normally get a title sheet that tells us, you know, what are the abbreviations, different type of uh, patterns that are used, different type of lines that have been used in the drawings. It give us a set of uh, drawings, a list of uh, drawings that we'll be using. So here's an example of that. We may get demolition plans, topography plans, you know, where we see the different aspects of it, drainage and utilities, um, plants, where the plants going to be located. Uh, we are going to work a lot on the plan layout, right? We're going to be, this is a, a cut of the building and look from above. So we need to be very familiar with the different lines, symbols, legends, and notes from these plan layouts. So I urge you to, when you get this drawing, you start looking at the, at the items that you have, read the keys, read the notes, read what it means, okay? It's very important because you won't get familiar with the drawings unless you understand what is the architect trying to show over there? Then we have elevations. These are views from the outside of a building. Uh, so you, you can get an idea of how that, look, that building looks when you are outside. You may have sections. These are inside the building cuts to see how the inside of the building looks like. 
structural drawings shows you the different location and, and sizes for foundations. We're going to be looking into those. Mechanical drawings show you the mechanical equipment, typically HVAC systems and docks. Uh, so we, we need to understand and look at those drawings also. Electrical drawings will show you the location of the plugs, switches, uh, lights and so on. So we need to be familiar with those. Mill work, uh, these are custom shop built uh, components uh, that are mostly into the finishes and, uh, and, and sometimes furnishing. Symbols and legends are important. We need to be familiar with those. This type of a, a, a symbol, a circle with a section inside, it will, it will reference you to another view of the drawing. So it will normally tell you what drawing you need to be looking at and what section within that drawing. Okay, so when you look at that uh, symbol on the plan, it will have a dashed line that says, okay, this is a cut section. That section can be found on this drawing, 14A11. Look at the detail C. Another important symbol to recognize is the north. Where is the north located? How do you building is oriented? That's important because then you're going to be looking at the elevations, north, south, east, west, and you need to see where those correspond to your plan layout. So when you're looking at the cross section, you know, things that are supposed to be on the right should be on the right. If they are on the left, then it means that you have messed up the location of the north. Doors or windows, it will show you the location of the windows, the location of the doors. Normally the doors have a, a little symbol with a, a small uh, curve, so that's where the door opens. The windows are inside the, the walls, so they look different. Look at the symbols that you have, make sure that you understand them. There's going to be a door and window schedule on the drawings that basically locates different doors and it tells you what type of uh, door it is. It gives you details about the frame, the jams, the, the hardware that you may have on those uh, doors. Windows, same thing. You may have uh, different symbols to represent also the, the windows and have a count of those. The walls will be represented with different shapes. So here we have an example of a concrete gray beam. We have a 18 CMU, 18 CMU with reinforcement, uh, concrete walls, so you know, different line types and shapes will represent different type of uh, materials that, and we need to be aware of what uh, th those differences are. The materials are normally differentiated by different patterns. So there should be a legend that tells you, okay, this is uh, insulation, this may be gravel, this may be porcelain. So when you see those patterns, you have an idea of what type of material they, they're calling for. Sometimes you get a, a drawing like this one where it's a very detailed and specific. It tells you what are the finishes and the materials that you have for different type of walls. Electrical symbols, again, where it's a light fixture, uh, doorbell chimes, you know, all these elements that you need to incorporate into the system would have a small symbol and uh, a location nearby where that uh, unit will be connected. So you need to be familiar with the electrical symbols. You have to look at the drawings, read the notes, make sure that you understand what those symbols mean and where to find them. Fire alarm symbols, TV and radio, plumbing symbols, you know, they represent items in the, uh, in the system that you need to, to install. For example, you may have a sanitary tee that would look like this. You have, you know, a straight section with a bend. It would be represented on the drawing like something like this, you know. So you need to understand that when you see the symbol, it means a sanitary tee. So you understand what is the relationship between the symbol on the drawing and the real item that you will later on install. The plumbing symbols, uh, the ones really important here are these uh, up and down. Uh, they represent changes in 
demand and direction. When you have a pipe that's going on the floor, you will be able to measure that direction, that section on your plan layout. But then it will have a symbol at the end that may look like this. So it's half of a circle with a line. It means an elbow that is going down. So you know when you see this that you have to look at the elevation or the cross section to make sure that you account for that change in elevation. Otherwise, your account for materials will be short. Um, uh, mechanical symbols, also they have, uh, you know, different small symbols to represent items that needs to be installed on the site. You need to read the notes to make sure that you understand what these symbols mean. So they will have a description of uh, those symbols somewhere in the drawing. Welding symbols, uh, demolition, plant, finishes, and then uh, we have schedules that shows you what type of a finish you will have on different rooms. Didn't I tell you to put those things in mute? Yeah. Students. Ironmongery schedule, it gives you the schedule of uh, materials, the, the iron stuff that you need into the different doors, the hardware. Lighting features uh, schedule tells you what type of light you have, where it's used, and a lot of uh, details. HVAC uh, folding schedule, so those are tables that give you information about different items in the drawing that you need to really be mindful. So look for these drawings, look for these symbols, read the notes, read the legends, make sure that you get familiar with this uh, stuff. Any questions? So that was my uh, very quick.